Welcome back. So in the last video, we introduced this idea of bandwidth uh, and the two different meanings that it has in computer networks. So the, the one meaning is literally the width of a frequency band, and the other really is the number of bits per second that can be transferred uh, over a particular link. And so we just want to talk a little bit more about that. So again, we, we talked about having the example of a one megabit per second uh, link, where each bit takes, if we measure the time on a horizontal axis, we can kind of draw it out in this way and say, okay, yeah, we have one cycle would take one microsecond and that will be one bit of information sent. If we double the bandwidth, double the speed uh, of that communications link, then it will only take half as much space. So we, in half a microsecond, we can send a bit through. So this has a number of implications because uh, not only does the link have a speed in terms of how frequently bits are uh, pushed out onto the link, there's also this question around uh, how long it takes for a signal uh, to propagate, how long it might spend in the queue before it gets transmitted, uh, as well as the actual time it takes to transmit it. And so these three things together create the total latency, that is the delay from when a message is issued to when it's actually received at the other end. So the transmission speed is what we're talking about with the bandwidth of the, um, the link in bits per second. Uh, the queuing time really is just how long the operating system of the network stack holds onto it before it can schedule it uh, for being sent. Uh, there might be a lot of other traffic coming through which together is, you know, is greater than what the, uh, the link can carry, greater than the bandwidth of that link at that point in time, and so there might be some buffering going on. Uh, and so that can add uh, potentially actually a very large delay, although usually uh, quite a, a short delay or no delay at all. So that's the queue time and the transmission time. But what we also have is the propagation time. So this is the time it takes for the signal to actually get from the transmitter to the receiver. Now, if this is a wireless signal, then that will typically be uh, you know, at near to the speed of light. It's a little bit slower uh, in atmosphere than in space, but near enough to the speed of light. If it's a wired connection, for example, an ethernet cable, it's actually quite interesting, it's slower even though you kind of think about uh, cabled communications being faster, and that's actually because the cabled communication can often have a higher bandwidth, even though the propagation rate uh, of the signal through the copper is actually slower. But we still, it's actually still very, very fast. It might be, for example, a tenth of the speed of light, uh, something like that. Uh, so it's still going to be, uh, you know, in most cases, it's not uh, typically an issue. So the time to transmit uh, something then, if we're looking at the transmit time, will be the size of the thing that we need to transmit divided by the bandwidth. So again, as we said, this is related back to the bandwidth and bigger things take longer to transmit than smaller things. This is reasonably logical. Now, where all this is quite interesting in terms of if you want to say, you know, is a network going to be fast to transfer something? It depends on how big the thing is you're trying to transfer. If the thing that you're trying to transfer is only one bit long, then actually the bandwidth almost doesn't matter. You know, so long as it's, uh, you know, it, it's not you know, a fraction of a bit per second or something like that, then the, uh, the transmission delay is going to be quite low. But the propagation delay could be very high. So if, for example, you're sending uh, communications to Mars, the propagation delay can actually be minutes at the speed of light. Uh, and so in that case, actually, the propagation delay is really going to swamp uh, the transmission time. On the other hand, if you need to transfer gigabytes of data somewhere, then the propagation delay is probably not very important because there'd be so many bits in transit in that propagation delay. Uh, and that then it's actually, it's, you know, how many bits per second can you shove into the transmission link uh, to come through? So again, if it's only a short communication, the propagation will tend to dominate. Uh, if it's a very large uh, amount of data you need to send, then it will tend to be the bandwidth, uh, the transmission time that will dominate. And so all of this then actually leads into this interesting thing, which is actually the, uh, the delay bandwidth product. So this is the amount of time it, that things are in transit multiplied by the bandwidth. So this is how much data can actually be en route over a given link at a given point in time. And so we often kind of think about the, uh, uh, the channel as a bit of a pipe 
And so the delay is how long the pipe is and the bandwidth is sort of, you know, it affects the diameter, the size of the pipe, how wide the pipe is, if you like. And so the um, delay bandwidth product is, you, you multiply these two things together to get the amount of data that can be in transit at any point in time. And this can actually be surprisingly large amounts of data. So the example that we have here in the slide, if we say that there is a, a delay in transmission, a propagation uh, delay of 50 milliseconds from end to end, and a bandwidth of 45 megabits per second, we multiply those two things out. And notice that one is in, uh, measured in seconds, the other is uh, measured in inverse seconds, so those cancel out. And we simply have a number multiplied by a number of bits. In this case, it will be uh, 2.5 uh, times 10 to the 6 bits in total, uh, which gives us 280 kilobytes of data that would actually be in transit at any point with that communication link. Uh, if, for example, you had a fiber optic cable going around Australia, where the propagation delay might be, uh, you know, of the order of uh, 100 milliseconds or something like that, but that it can carry, you know, tens of gigabits per second, then this delay bandwidth product is going to be much, much higher. And so, uh, coming back to, um, uh, to the, the performance question around networks, so as we said, that for larger or smaller things, it's the, whether the bandwidth or the latency, and that's the, prop the transmission rate, as well as the, uh, you know, the, the latency from one end to the other, the propagation delay, um, all of these things uh, will impact. So smaller things, it's going to be the latency that's actually much more important because they don't take very long to actually do the transmission. But if they take a long time to get there, then this is an issue. So if you send, for example, a text message uh, to the United States from Australia, uh, where I am, then the latency of those international connections is going to be the overwhelming thing because the, uh, you know, the message might only be a kilobyte or much smaller in size, so it might only take you know, microseconds on modern communications links to send, but it will take many milliseconds, potentially hundreds of milliseconds, to transfer from one side of the world to the other. On the other hand, if you're downloading you know, a new ISO for Linux or something like that um, over the same kind of link, now we're talking about gigabytes of data and now the, the latency is much less important because you, this is the transmission time for that uh, image is going to be you know, seconds to minutes to hours depending on the network speed. And the fact that we're adding on a few milliseconds or a few hundreds of milliseconds is really uh, neither here nor there. So again, it depends very much what you're doing as to which of those is the, uh, uh, the more important, uh, whether it's the bandwidth or the latency. And I think, oh yes, yeah, so this is another uh, interesting point in here as well, which is that uh, if you know the delay bandwidth product of a link uh, and you want to aim to try and keep that link full when transmitting to a receiver, uh, of course, the higher that product is, then the harder this is going to be. And the um, uh, each time you have to send uh, around a round trip, you have to tolerate the whole latency, which adds to the, um, uh, the time of communications and reduces the perceived performance of the link. And so if a sender is not able to keep the pipe full, you will still get the latency and these round trip delays without getting the full benefit of the network capacity. So again, you may want to think about uh, when you're designing a network, uh, what the uh, bandwidth delay product requirement is, and of course actually what the, um, you know, the latency requirement is if you want to uh, have the system perform well. So performance of a network has, there's a number of these uh, factors uh, that come into play uh, in order to, to produce a, a performant network. So that's it for now and we'll continue in the next video.